I've also read the guidelines and policies for FTA as to why you need a contingency and the guidelines for creating contingency. Um, I've read the FFG report that you folks have done in terms of what are the processes and procedures for creating your contingency and what are the best management pro processes for why you should put it in place. I think at this point, I don't know that we've been following it. Um, I don't think the issue that I have right now is necessarily what that number is. It's who should be paying for the contingency and who should be keeping us in line with that contingency. Sure. I think the question really is, should the state and the GET tax be paying for that contingency or should the city be helping to pay for that contingency? The no reason I really also wanted to get into control and look at the breakdown of the costs is, you know, it's what we're willing to give up. The skim, keep in mind, is about $300 million of GET, $30 million a year. What does that represent for the state? That's weighted student formula. That is homeless programs. That is healthcare. That's a lot of different things. That's DOT support that they probably need. That's a lot of different programs and services that I will have to really think hard and seriously about. Social services programs, educational programs. Um, that's a lot for us. That is not popular for any of the guys on this table at all. Tax credits, support for homeless families, low-income families, every single community in the state of Hawaii and every single one of your communities as well. When we talked about EITC at this table, that's a $50 million hit. Could we do it if we're giving up $30 million? I don't know. That's the reality of what we face, too, when we talk about giving back SKIM. So this is not an easy decision for us. Why I asked for the breakdown of the project costs as well, $300 million, for example, in the information that you gave back to us. One of the breakdowns in here, the city and county costs alone for participating departments, how much does that come out to for the city's portion? And I don't think it's completely yeah. done yet in terms of the payment of it. From the contracted portion of it that goes to the city. And I said, I apologize, members, I know that the date is the 22nd, but I just got it today. What is the total that it comes out to in terms of the amount allocated to the city and county? For the participating departments. And I know it's bundled in terms of the parts yeah, portion okay. as well. I believe, I'm sorry, my vision is kind of going. Is that $281 million or so? <laughs> Gary, you probably can see that better than I can. I think so. It's in that black area, so yeah. you can't see it. Oh. Okay, so the city and county's portion, part, BNF, budget and finance for city, DPP, DTS, Board of Water Supply, I think, is about $281 million. Yeah? Is that correct? Okay. So that's going to go to the city and county um, as well. I think some of that's already been spent out, yeah? And I know part of that was also really unbudgeted from the time of inception from probably the very beginning as well. If you take a look at the original contract amount to the current value anticipated changes, it really went up quite a bit. So, you know, there's quite a bit that you folks are already getting or could contribute just from your portion as well right there. Wanted to also ask you about some other areas potentially where you could help out from the contingency aspect. Um, because again, at least knowing the project cost and how much it is, $8.2 billion, that includes the contingency, knowing if we gave some of the skim back, giving you the whole GET, state giving up, again, $30 million a year of our general funds, knowing that, you folks giving the contingency. I just had a couple of questions, um, and I know that you folks haven't distributed your budget yet. I think you're doing that this week. We're a little bit off on the budget cycle, um, and I'm not as familiar with the city budget process as I am the state budget process, so I do apologize, uh, especially since you have not released yours yet, so I had to pull last year's printed copy. Um, 
But if there's one thing budget chairs like to do, and I'm sure Chair Monahan knows this, we like to sit up at night and read people's budgets. <laughs> it's a sick process that we do. So I had some questions about yours. Um, just because, you know, I think there are ways, quite frankly, because that's what we had to do in looking at ways that we didn't have to potentially extend the GET to assist this process. Wanted to see if there are ways that you could also do this. This is something we challenged you to do two years ago. This is something we've challenged you to do now without having to look at raising real property taxes. First, if you read the bill in the first place, it says look at your other funds. Don't just go to the easiest trough with this to threaten raising real property taxes first. Um, and I know, Gary, we had talked about this a little earlier in the day. Again, this is an old version. You guys are coming on a new version, so you might have changed it uh, in the past year since this is out. But I only have what I have public, as the rest of the public does. Um, but notice in the appendix in the operating expenditures that you folks had anticipated, unless you guys were just planning on getting a GET increase somewhere, um, in the appendix that you guys had anticipated expending an additional $60 million for utilities or other enterprises for mass transit um, going into fiscal year 2019. Were you anticipating additional revenues from us? Or where were you getting that? Did you build that into your budget? Are you expecting additional revenues from somewhere? What is that? I, I think, um, you know, you're referring to the strategic plan, right, yeah. that we had our six-year projection um, for fiscal year 2019. There's about a $60 million increase, I guess. Which um, adds to your base going right. forward from that point forward. And, you know, I think um, what this is is that um, we had anticipated um, on the old schedule, the FFGA schedule, that at this time we'd be starting operations and there would be some of the operating costs of, of rail okay. um, that the increase was. Um, and this is all uh, taken from, I guess, Hart's uh, financial plan. Um, this was included that the city would be uh, bearing this cost for operations. Um, and how are you going to pay for that? Because usually when you bear the expenditure, you bear the revenue, you balance it with the revenue as well. Right. So where was, did you have the corresponding revenue? Because if you've got the expenditure built into your plan, right. then you've got right here a $60 million bump already built in that you haven't accounted for that can then be used towards some kind of bonding going forward. Because you're not going to be doing operations in 2019. Right. So how have you anticipated so you know this. what this Reve does, with the revenue side, right? What this reflects is, um, you know, it was just a projection that we had for 2019. Mm -hmm. um, the way we would have um, handled this is, you know, this sheet that you're looking at um, mm -hmm. reflects um, how we do our. Um, revenue projections, and mm -hmm. those are all estimates, right? So uh, as the years go by, um, we have to check to see if the revenue estimates are coming in as we anticipated. Um, mm -hmm. Our expenses also, um, whether you know we have carryover, mm -hmm. and I think this is what this chart is showing: is that the carryover is the number that um, you know we're trying to um, achieve. So if we need to raise. Um, additional revenues for that year. Uh, we, we could do a number of things. We could anticipate um, if we had to raise revenues in some form, or we could um, you know, reduce our spending to make sure that our carryover is sufficient and you know, use all those different methods. Um, and even if we had to raise other fees right, to get to um, you know, paying off um, our projections for you know, this um, O&M expense that we had in 2019. So how would you planned on doing it? Or had you guys not just <coughs> planned for that? Well, this is just a projection. So we okay. didn't have, uh, we just put it in here to know that uh, we will be having to uh, provide this funding as rail starts operations. And our plan, um, you know, is actually when we look at our highway fund, which is what would be um, used to uh, fund our operation and maintenance, um, we would be adjusting some of the rates that we, we have today. Um, looking forward, um, we have um, proposed bills already to anticipate some of this um, operating and maintenance costs, not only of rail, but also of bus. Mm -hmm. Okay, and even the related debt service then is all off, I'm assuming, in these particular... Yes. You guys so, were so anticipating we that you folks were going to have to float early because it goes significantly up in 2019. And, and that was from the original plan. Um, you know, there was a short term of 
uh, financing commercial paper, rolling that and turn in some long-term debt, uh, seven to 10 years at the longest. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's why we have that uh, debt service increasing in those years. Okay, so based upon when you're looking at doing a very sharp increase in debt service, heart-related debt service in 2019, literally going from 38 million to 249 and all that. So at that point, you would have had to have been already, because you weren't, at last year, you weren't coming to the legislature, you would have had to have done a real property tax increase at that point, because you weren't talking to the legislature. So you're blaming the legislature, saying that it's your fault, you're not doing this, but you weren't even talking to your own city council about revenue options, you weren't lifting any kinds of caps. What was your plan? It was already published, this was public. You can't publish this kind of thing, like saying you're gonna go and increase debt service from 38 to 249, doing all this stuff and not have a plan to raise the revenue if you're already gonna have this kind of debt. What was the counter to this? You can't say, well, this was just an exercise in the appendix of your strategic plan. How are you gonna raise the revenue for this? This was a year ago. Mm -hmm. I think um, you know this, these projections were all based on the old FFGA that was approved. Um, at, well, I feel like you guys were setting us up. No, I, I think that, um, you know... This was a year ago, and you were setting up expenditures lacking revenues without... A year ago, without even coming to us, without even trying on your own to figure out how you're going to pay for it, tracking it out towards 2021, knowing you did not have that kind of revenue from the legislature. I, I think that this reflects the old FFGA plan that, um, you know, um, the cost going all the way was already set at um, the early amount. Then when we found out um, recently that the you know, project is short, um, that changed all the, the plans. This but you is were just already based short on, last year. Yeah, I mean, you but, were already short last year. You've gotten shorter, but you were already short last yeah. year. But you know, this is only from our original the plan that was approved by the uh, FDA, um, and this is on Hart's, um, I guess, financial plan. Okay, have you? Were you even considering in this very same appendix your real property tax already without you folks even looking at a potential increase goes up by about thirty-two million dollars each fiscal year right now, considering bonding, mm -hmm. about how much can you get off bond financing without raising real property taxes alone, how much bonds can you float off the $32 million increase that you get annually already? You Have you guys considered that? Well, you Using, know. I mean, if you're, I've, all the testimony that you folks have come before us and said, you said, rail is my top priority. This is what we need to do. Have you considered taking you haven't even raised real property taxes. You guys are already set to get about 32 to $33 million naturally on your own based on this paper here, and it's old, about 32, $33 million increase in real property tax right here. And that's just your real property tax. If I take a look at other fees that fuel tax, if I take a look at public service ones, and you should thank me because I at least deferred the public utility franchise tax, even though no one testified on it the other day. Thank Weight you. tax, other stuff. If you cobble together all the natural increases in fees you're going to get without raising it one cent, have you folks looked at what you could bond off of those increases without raising taxes or fees? Because how much can you get off of about $10 million worth of increases? In bonds. So, like, you know, 32 million, you know, is about 500 million dollars in bonds that we okay. produce, right? So, I mean, you have the ability to do that right there. Plus, how much in commercial paper already do you guys have access to? About 350 million dollars, right? I, I believe Hart's um, maximum is 350 million. Okay. So now, in addition to that, if I look through this book, because you see, that's what happens when you cannot sleep at night and you sit down with a budget. <laughs> Sorry, Joey, that's your future, man, I'm telling you. Okay, if you take a look at this appendix as well on D15, this is based upon capping TAT revenues for the first five years at $93 million, right? We didn't cap you at $93 million, did we? I mean, we can. Okay, but your other guys are going to freak out if we cap you at $93 million. How much did we cap you at? I think it's 103. 103. Right? What bill is coming up after this? TAT. Okay. Now, I could be mean and say, okay, we'll go to 93, but I think my intention actually was going up a little bit higher. Not too much, but I, have, I am only one part of the legislature, and we have to think about that. But 
that is based on a low projection. And you folks get a good portion of that. So you actually underestimated in your six year projection, you get more money here. You can bond off of part of that too. You get more money right here alone. I mean, what I'm saying is, you have you taken the time to dig through your very own budget to find more money without taxing the taxpayer more? And then on top of that, when I look at your pie chart, you have a 24.88% carryover. Right, that carryover represents um, not just general fund, yeah, it represents our restricted funds also from um, our sewer capacities and all different other funds. I understand funds. that, but then how much of, that's a high carryover. Yeah. I, I, if I were one of you all, I want to know exactly what that is. I, I mean, no offense, because that's a really big carryover. How much of it is potentially possible to be used towards some kind of bonding to get you a little bit farther, to get you to pay towards that that small little little bit extra to make up the project cost plus pay for that contingency because again remember contingency i get it that most people think it's a real cost but it's a way to say the city you got to come to the city to ask for that money they hold you accountable because in the end you don't necessarily have to pay out all that cost read every manual for fta contingency is there if you need it in case it goes over, but it is not a hard and fast cost. It shouldn't have to be. And if you have to go ask her for money or him for money, I'd be scared. Then, but then that's one way that you can cobble together the money that you need. That was what this bill was about. And that, when I look at at least the old budget, and again, I don't have your new one because mm -hmm. it's coming out on Thursday. That's where I found a whole bunch of money for you, and yeah, it's bonded, but it's without raising taxes. You got a lot of increases. You got hidden ones all over the place. I could be very wrong, because it's an old budget. I get it. But did you start there? Did you look? Yeah, uh, you, know, you know, just um, on that note, you know, we've just finished our budget process, and um, when we looked at every single account, you know, these are just projections. When we look at our uh, franchise tax, our public service company tax, um, most of them are going down. Uh, we projected, you know, things at least flat. But how much uh, your real property tax naturally going to go up right now? The real property tax. Um, we were Don't tell me it's at, going down. No, it was about 70 some odd million just mm -hmm. uh, from year to year. When we've added all our collective bargaining, our EUTF, ERS, and that was about a hundred million dollar increase. And do you think it's any so, different for the legislature? No, it's not. No. And we on this bill are giving up 30 million. Right. Have you looked at your base? Because honestly, when I looked at your budget, you're increasing position counts. You're increasing costs for current expenses too. Yeah, it's a little bit, a couple bodies here and there, and a couple things here and there. It's no different from what everyone else has too. Right. If this is your number one priority, then you make hard decisions, you make cuts. That's what I'm saying. But a little bit of bonding goes a long way. Did you start there first before you came to the legislature and asked us to just extend on the backs of the taxpayer? No, I think, um, you know, we, we initially thought that, um, you know, if we went to our bonding system, right, where we would use our uh, city real property general fund money to bond, um, you know, initially when we went out for our bond rating, when we were anticipating floating bonds for HART, um, the revenue source was initially the GET. Um, our bond raters have said that if that changes and we are to use, like, our city funds for real property tax, that we would be have to be reviewed, I guess, for our bond worthiness, right? Because now we're using our internal funds. But um, that was a discussion that we had. Um, we know that if we go that route, our bond rating probably would slip a couple, um, you know, classes down from our AA plus, and would probably cost more, I guess, for bonding um, the project yeah, if we're going through the real property tax side. Right? So are you, does every other jurisdiction in the country go to the state and say, you're going to have to help me out with my mass transit system. 
I'll just... I know that many of the legacy systems, Boston, New York, mm -hmm. San Francisco, actually have a dedicated funding source mm -hmm. that in, this, in case of Massachusetts is a luxury tax, the entire state pays it for the MBTA in Boston. I don't know if Boston's um, a really great example. But I know, I'm just okay. giving you some, I, and you're right, it's the oldest system, but mm -hmm. there are dedicated funding sources provided by the state for their mass transit systems. Mm -hmm. But um, to answer your question, I, right. I don't know, Brennan, if you have more, or Murti? I don't know how no, LA I is. Think, I, think, I think you're right. You're right. Well, you know, I appreciate that you're concerned about your bond rating. I'm concerned also about us keeping our word to taxpayers. You've heard from many of them who were sitting mm -hmm. here who were probably in our hearing room two years ago. When you asked for perpetuity, we gave you five years. Um, they don't want us to break our promise again. They think we're liars. Okay. Um, it concerns us when we hear those kind of comments as well. That they think, oh, here they go again. Whether it's perpetuity or five years to them, it's just us politicians doing our thing. You know, I want a job that my kids can look at and say, I'm proud of what my mother does. And at this point, I don't want them to Google. <laughs> That's the first rule, by the way. Don't Google mom. Um, <laughs> I'm afraid of what they might find. Um, but that's a big concern. And I don't know that you folks have really fully explored your options, whether it's looking in your base, looking at your budget thoroughly for all sources of revenue, even looking at the existing statute for every enabling piece of legislation. For example, you know, we have community facilities districts that would allow you to be very different in terms of how you even assess valuations for the improvements that you're making in and around the rail transit area. Have you folks even considered that? No one ever does. No one has. They've done special improvement districts. No one has ever looked at the community facilities district. That's what other states and jurisdictions have done, whether it's enhanced facilities districts that California is now doing or other people have done. Yeah, it's controversial. It's different. But again, they're having to figure out different and unique ways to pay for their improvements as well. Have you done that? Have you explored it? The only thing that we have seen to date is let's walk across the street and ask for a GET because that's what we're going to do. We don't want to affect our bond rating. We don't want to raise real property tax. We don't want to look at our own funds. Haven't even floated a bill or gotten at least it far to take away that ordinance that limits the use of any of your funds. And if you read the bill, it is not just your real property tax. You can use your TAT, you can use your fuel tax, you can use your franchise fees, you can use any other source of funding. But you only use your property tax because it's the scariest one to those guys sitting in the room and you think it scares the rest of these guys in the room. But if you look at your chart, you got a whole lot of other revenues here other than real property tax. I'd be real curious to see what that carryover fund is. 25.88% is the second largest source of fund behind the 34.6% fund behind real property tax. My next question to you is going to you give me a breakdown of your 25.88% carryover. I get it, half of it's restricted, but I would want to see exactly what that is because I'm pretty sure Joey wants to see what it is too. You don't have to just threaten the use of increasing real property tax, but if you ask me, based upon what I see in here, it was your intention all along to raise real property tax anyway before you even came to us this year. Based upon how you had the heart debt service laid out and the fact that you had expenditures with no revenue, that was what you were going to do anyway. But then you blame the legislature by coming here. That is very disingenuous. So I just want to make clear, as mayor, I have no intent to raise real property taxes, nor did I have ever have that intent. Well, we did do the res A. It's scary for that what you did do is you put expenditures out here lacking a revenue stream. That is irresponsible. If that's what you're telling me, you have expenditures here that I don't see a revenue source for. That is unbalanced. That's irresponsible at that particular point. So hopefully the budget you produce on Thursday is at least balanced. Yeah. And I think, you know, our plan was, you know, try to um, control our costs um, and try to increase the carrier some and actually um, look at our revenue projections and make sure that um, going forward that we could meet some of it. We, we know that um, these are all general fund monies and um, basically come from real property tax, you know, at the end of the day. Okay. 
Okay, well... I... I think I, I, if I were in your shoes, I'd know how I could fund it out. But I know you still want perpetuity. So, I guess we'll have to disagree on some points. Members, do you have any other questions? Since I've kind of monopolized the floor for a little while. So you keep me all um, pent up for a while, and then I just keep talking. <laughs> See what they have to deal with? Just, just one. Okay, Senator Revere. Is there a point when it's too expensive? <clears throat> Is 12 billion too much, 15 billion? When, are we, when will we know that, gee, we should have stopped at eight billion? Is there a point, can any of you answer that question? When is it too expensive to continue? When do we cut our losses and stop pouring money into this? What's that, what's that number? I, I don't know there's a curve that you can draw and say this is your cutoff point. But based on what we know and where this project has come from and where it is today, uh, we feel comfortable in saying that $8.2 billion is the construction cost required to finish the job all the way up to Alamon, the 20 miles, 21 station system. We were told uh, in 2015 that, you know, all the contracts would be let by the end of th that year if we were to extend the tax, right? So we, we were told that already. So what are we to believe? You are absolutely right. I think, unfortunately, that did not happen. Uh, we had several reasons that have come up here with. There was an extended level of efforts for the staff and consultants and cost escalation shift in revenue service date from 2021 to 2025. So a shift of four or five years has created a big uh, demand for additional dollars. The, there was a procurement delays uh, that started way back in, even before Hart was formed. There was a, some contracts were let out, and then later on they were started again. So those procurement delays have costed quite a bit of money. And then the additional contingency that we had a long discussion this afternoon. The HECO utility relocations also has uh, added to the cost of the project. And then the owner-controlled insurance program was another item that has increased. And then claims and litigation support. So those are the elements that have increased the cost between 2015 and 2017. So what, 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 what's going to be the final price in your crystal ball? Pardon me? How much, what's the final price here? What's, what's your crystal ball says? Ten? I think the mayor suggested $10 billion. Is that is that kind of... Remember? Right now, the construction cost, we can say, based on what we now know today, based on our bids that we have received, the changes we have negotiated, and where we are with our utility companies, $8.2 billion is the construction cost without any financial cost. I think that number has been also sort of validated by the PMOC, who is the FTA consultant. They do an independent. But there's financing charges already that we're looking at? 8.2 8 .2 is only construction. Finance charges depends on the way the financing is going to be arranged by the city, whether it's a 20-year bond, 25-year bond, and the bond rating, all of those influence the financing costs. So 10, 10 billion. I, I honestly don't know. I don't have that crystal ball for finance. You know. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Chair. Okay, thank you. Okay, members, any other questions? All right. Uh, Chair Takuda, I did want to thank you. Yes, you did give us a little bit of a scorching. Um, but I know we all want to get the same goal, and I do appreciate it. <laughs> thank you all for right. hearing thank the you. bills and hopefully moving them. <laughs> thank you. Okay. SD1. I know we had a very lively <laughs> discussion. I think we all want to go home and uh, take a nap now or maybe something else um, <laughs> after that one. Let's see. Recommendation on this one is to keep a vehicle moving for further discussion. Um, I know that the SD1 has quite a bit of uh, pieces to it. What I'd like to recommend is that we move the SD2 forward at this time, um, which is just uh, returning uh, the skim portion. It um, also has the requirement that um, the county repeal the ordinance portion by the end of the year that will enable them to access um, 
any of their funds um, to be able to support the construction of the project. And as we had um, discussed during our hearing today, there are a number of existing funds they could tap into to support that project without even having to consider increases to existing fees or taxes right now. Did I pass? Oh. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 1290 ST1 with an ST2 of the members present. Are there any no's? Any reservations? Measure is adopted. Okay, thank you. And with that, members, we are adjourned.